Welcome to the channel, I'm the Scottish Astrologer and in this video I will be talking about the upcoming full moon and lunar eclipse which takes place tropically in the cardinal zodiac sign of Capricorn and on interestingly the 4th of July Independence Day for the United States but it will be the 5th of July for me here in the UK and for of course other parts of Europe where visible. Now this particular lunar eclipse is known as a penumbral eclipse which just means that the moon is only moving through the lighter, fainter part of the Earth's shadow or in other words it is an imperfect alignment of the sun, the Earth and the moon. Now this eclipse will be visible for all of South America and nearly all of North America, excluding the very northern tip of Canada. It can also be seen from nearly all of Africa and also the southwest of Europe, including of course the UK will get to see this eclipse, of course if the weather allows. But again, this is only a penumbral lunar eclipse so not as spectacular by any means as a total eclipse. And just like solar eclipses, lunar eclipses are also all about change in general. Now this is the third eclipse we have had in a row. We had a lunar eclipse, a solar eclipse, and now this third and final back-to-back -back eclipse in the form of another lunar. Now before I talk about the wider effects I see this lunar eclipse bringing in general, to see how you will be personally affected and in which area of life the change will be directed, you need to take a look at your natal chart and check which house 13 degrees 38 seconds of Capricorn falls into, again tropically. And also check to see if any planets or luminaries etc are also activated as they are also if they are also located roughly 13 degrees of Capricorn this will be the case and again the house will show which area of life to expect the change to occur and again if any planets etc are activated that will show roughly in what manner okay now Mars being more physically Mercury being more mentally, for example. Now, let me get started on the more wider, my, my more wider general view and observations regarding this particular eclipse. Firstly, if you take a look at the chart on screen, you will, of course, see the moon located in 13 degrees, 38 seconds of Capricorn. And when the moon is in the zodiac sign of Capricorn, she is in what is known as detriment, which means the moon does not like to be located in that sign, as it's directly opposite where the moon most loves to be located in the zodiac sign which she rules, Cancer. So again, this is why the moon is in detriment, and so in a rather bad place energetically in Capricorn. Again, it's directly opposite in the heavens from Cancer, and Cancer is the zodiac sign which the moon rules. So she's basically just longing to be there. Now going back to the chart on screen, as you can see, we also have Jupiter in 23 degrees 30 seconds of Capricorn making it just under 10 degrees away from the moon and so considered in conjunction. We also have Pluto conjunct Jupiter, also located in Capricorn at 23 degrees. And we also have Uranus and Taurus making a trine aspect to the moon. And on top of this, we also have Neptune in rulership in Pisces, making a sextile aspect to Jupiter in Pluto and so also linking energetically again with the moon as there's an aspect through Jupiter okay like I said just in conjunction with the moon so 
the energies of Neptune linking with Jupiter is also affecting the moon directly or indirectly even. Now Mars has also moved into the sign which he rules Aries and is making a square aspect to Mercury who has conjunct the Sun in Cancer which is obviously also lining up with the Moon energetically in the form of an opposition aspect. And on top of all this, Saturn has retrograded back into Capricorn from the sign of Aquarius. He is currently located at 29 degrees of Capricorn and is also conjunct with Pluto and Jupiter, but now in the same sign. So there's a lot going on here, and unlike the solar eclipse two weeks before this eclipse, which took place in the zodiac sign of Cancer, this time round, as the moon is in detriment in Capricorn, it is quite a bad outlook for the people in general, as of course we are represented as a whole astrologically by the moon. Now, now things were briefly in our favour, okay, for the past couple of weeks. Again, as the solar eclipse took place in Cancer, where the moon rules, but now it has flipped and things are now looking a lot more grim. But we can and we will get past it. But it's an astrologically tough ride and tough month ahead for the people and any legitimate revolutionary movements which are going to see things getting a lot rougher and tougher, shall we say. So be aware of that for this eclipse and realise things astrologically currently are not in your favour and the people in general is not in the favour of the people in general, which of course you're a part of. And so bide your time and choose your moments wisely and be very cautious about your legitimate movements being hijacked and guided by the powers that be, which have this far managed to do a good job of this. Now remember, as well as Saturn in retrograde, we also have Mercury, Neptune, Pluto and Jupiter also still all in retrograde, which is making people go a bit nuts, especially because of the current climate and global situations we are all facing. So another reason to take a step back, think about everything we are all doing before potentially regretting it later. Again, this and the eclipse in general does not favour the people collectively. So please again, be truly aware of that. Keep that in mind and try and make your decisions based on this. Don't do anything potentially silly for you at this moment because it really doesn't favour you. The chances of you getting away with it are slim, put it that way. Now, Mars, being the god of war and located in his sign, Aries, will have the war drums continuing to beat louder and louder. Now, regarding wars between nations and even some governments effectively at war with a segment of their own people. And with Saturn moving back into Capricorn, this is showing the powers that be through the state and through governments trying to really crack down against any rebellions and do any legitimate rebellions, really cracking down on them, infiltrating them and trying to take over and guide them or just crush them if it doesn't serve their purpose. And the state, the governments will be doing this, will be cracking down on rebellions with a lot more force, shall we say, than we have currently witnessed from them. Now, for my country, the United Kingdom, this eclipse conjuncts our natal sun and so is going to bring huge change to my nation. Maybe even the end of the Queen's long reign may be announced this summer, okay? 
to occur 2021, in my opinion. That's my feeling of the matter. But this could show this is the summer. This is when it's going to be announced, when the wheels are going to become put in motion for this switch over for the Queen stepping down. Now, of course, this may not happen, but this particular eclipse is going to bring huge change to the nation. And we are due uh, the Queen to step down and we're due for a king. So what better time, what better year for the year of change, what better year than the summer of change to announce this. And now the change may also be regarding our divorce with the EU. And come this July, we will know for sure if we will extend the transition period or not. So yeah, a lot going on for the UK at this particular moment in time regarding change, big change. I also truly feel and think that a second wave and an attempted second lockdown is truly on the cards and is a lot closer than we think. I fear the month of July may be the time they try and have a second lockdown, but I think a lot of Western countries like mine and the US, for example, will not shut down a second time. Now, my only worry with that is that if a truly lethal virus is released this time round, what then? All I am saying is this looks bad astrologically for the people and the dark magicians are still doing their illusions and tricks as seen by the sextile aspect from Neptune and Pisces. So please be aware of that and remember the story of the boy who cried wolf because it's important and because I think we have been lied to so much by them, by the powers that be, that it would be only natural to not listen when the wolf truly is here, okay, don't you think? I could be wrong, I hope I'm wrong, but depopulation is definitely on the agenda, it's definitely on the cards for us, and they want us to end ourselves, okay? And what better way than them telling us something and us not listening to them and paying the price for it? And... This would be karmatically clean, okay, shall we say. They would be karmatically clean if that was the root, if that's what they did, okay. And they would be karmatically clean as they warned us, okay. They told us about it, they warned us, and we didn't listen, okay. So you should be very careful if you ask me. You can't trust these people whatsoever. The first time round, Clearly, this virus was nowhere near as bad as what they were saying. Nowhere near it. And everybody, everyone is going to be thinking that what they did, the lockdown, was too extreme for how weak the virus actually was. And so if we're requested to lock down a second time, most people are not going to be taking it as seriously as the first time. And if this second wave is lethal, it's going to be devastating. And that truly worries me. Now, I also see something major taking place in the United States, okay, in the not-too-distant future after this eclipse. Seeing that it lands on July the 4th for them, which, of course, is their Independence Day. This, I feel, is linked to war, and I feel some kind of a false flag may be on the cards, very soon may be on the cards. Again, I hope I am wrong. I pray I'm wrong. It's just the astrology is looking gloomy for us, to say the least, and is showing the potential for war or a trigger point for war, again, with the energetic influence of Mars and Aries. And again, especially with the current global climate and current circumstances and feelings and emotions in the world right now. There's a lot of anger, a lot of rage, and a lot of blame game, and all the correct recipe for disaster, the correct ingredients for war. 
And again, we're hearing the war drums beating louder and louder. All different nations, all around the world are at it. And again, governments even against segments of the people. It's just the war, 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 constant violence, anger, rage, aggression. These energies truly worry me at this moment in time for this year, the year of change, 2020. And now lastly, the strong trine aspect from Uranus and Taurus to me signals the beginning of extremely noticeable inflation as we approach hyperinflation, okay? Before we have a repeat or rhyme of history in the form of another Great Depression, the Greatest Depression, as the death of the dollar and all fiat currencies increases in pace and we all begin to really notice just how weaker in terms of purchasing power our money has now become. And this is made even worse with quickly rising food prices. Like I have mentioned in a few videos, Uranus was in Taurus during the Great Depression and history is beginning to rhyme with that time, especially on the financial front. I am also seeing a technological revolution, if you will, with money going digital or cashless this time, with more and more shops themselves refusing to take cash right now. One more wave and or lockdown and then I think we will make the switch, okay, for some, including myself, unwillingly, but with no other choice. Also expect talk of a debt jubilee and reset, in my opinion, really begin to increase over the summer and the end of this year. And again, this is all shown and seen by the trine aspect from Uranus in Taurus. And now later this year on Halloween, we have a micro full moon, okay, which is totally powerfully linked with Uranus and Taurus. Very tightly conjunct on Halloween at the moment of this particular full moon. And so to me, that is showing roughly the time, the rough time, everything is triggered and everything truly begins to collapse, crumble like biscuits after Halloween, leading up to the end of this year, beginning of next year, that's when I feel personally the whole reset will occur. The astrology, every single moon video, eclipse video, you know, full moon, super moon eclipse, Uranus and Taurus, obviously, because it stays in the sign a long time, but every time it seems to be coming into play, aspecting in some manner the moon, okay, during these events. And it just keeps on warning us and warning us, repeatedly warning, 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 that this year something huge financially is going to occur, a collapse, a repeat or a rhyme of what happened during the Great Depression. But this time I feel it could be even worse if we don't all get our acts together and work together and stop these clowns, these powers that be, and again will always be if we allow them. We can't keep allowing them to do this or we're never going to truly progress. We're just going to be stuck under their boot decade after decade, century after century, age after age. It's getting tiring now, don't you think? 2020 is an extremely potent year for change, okay? Let's make this change beneficial for humanity, not the opposite. Okay, folks, I think I've rambled on enough for this video. Huge thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell at the right-hand side of the subscribe button. Until next time, take care.